All right, everyone. So uh, I'm making this first video of a series, and this is going to be just going over my uh, e-bike experience. And this is what I have so far. So um, I've been using this bike for a couple weeks now, and I did buy this from someone uh, mostly. I've changed some things since I bought it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, it's basically a Mongoose Impasse. Um, I, you can get it on Amazon or even I think Walmart even has them for uh, 275 or something like that um, The only thing I've changed out is the seat So uh, the original mongoose seat is kind of is just kind of hard for my my taste um, and I've got oops and I've got uh, the avid BB7 uh, disc brake system on both front and back so that is the upgrade from the disc brakes that came with uh, the bike as well as an upgrade from the disc brakes that come with the, the kit that I have on here so the kit is a uh, the Yescom it's about 275 for the kit it comes with the wheel and tire the hub motor um, <clears throat> comes with the uh, throttle here uh, which is this is like a battery indicator as well uh, it comes with the um, the brake levers, and they have like a an extra cable that comes out. Basically, this this uh, when you apply the brakes, it cuts power to the motor. It's like a safety feature. Um, and the kit would normally come with like another like little uh, like speed speedometer with like battery level and a bunch of other stuff on there. But uh, that didn't come with the bike. Um, the guy's probably using it on uh, another project or something, maybe. And it comes with uh, the, this is a 26 amp controller, and it comes with this bag. So, and the rack is different. This one, because it's a soft tail, um, he put a, a beam style rack on there. So yeah, this is the way it, the way it came. Um, you know, the brakes are different, the seat's different. Uh, I added this for my phone and fastened it with some wires because this comes out pretty easily. Um, otherwise it's stock. I think the handlebars are probably switched too. Um, the other difference is that this bike is originally a 29er, which means that it has a 20, it normally comes with 29 inch rims. And he's actually fitted 26 inch rims on both front and back. So the kit itself comes with 26 inch rim and tire. Um, of course the tire has been switched. Both of the tires on here now are the, uh, Hutchinson, Acrobat. I believe these are actually uh, 2.25 in width, 2.25 inches. And um, I think he's been riding most of this season. He said this is the first set of tires he put on his bike. Um, they are supposed to be fairly smooth on the center and then, you know, ridges on the sides. Um, it's better for like commuting and street riding. Uh, the back tire is kind of worn, um, partially I'm assuming because of the extra weight and also partially because when you are weighted down, um, it does rub on that beam, even though it is, you know, I, this, the suspension's pretty cranked out and I don't think I'm going to change that, but I'll tell you why that's not going to matter soon. So for now, uh, this came with four 12 volt uh, sealed lead acid batteries and they're wired in series so that creates a 48 volt battery for the 48 volt 1000 watt motor and the SLAs are extremely heavy I would say this bike as it sits right now uh, weighs over 100 pounds um, it doesn't really matter that much when you're using electricity, but if you were to run out of electricity in an emergency situation, this would be really hot, really tough to uh, pedal. So I have ordered uh, a LiPo battery setup, so that'll be here. Um, this is it's Sunday, what, March 1st? So uh, this should be hopefully here by the middle of this week. And then I'll be switching that out. So, yeah, these are uh, 10 amp hour batteries. So, uh, it's a 48 volt, 10 amp hour setup. I have coming uh, basically a, a 40, 44.4 volt, uh, 20 amp hour battery setup. So, it's four 6S batteries, um, two of them 
or you know each pair wired in series and then paralleling the other two to double up the amp hours so it's 6s 5000 uh, milliamp hour so that'll that'll in basically and that's the the sweet spot that most people have found for using this uh, like a 48 volt 1000 watt system and you know not necessarily looking for a bunch of crazy power you know more or less just economical and and using it for commuting and stuff so you can also go uh, life po which is actually lithium iron phosphate um, so life po 4 is what you'll find online and those are pretty good uh, from what I understand like ping battery makes them or uh, EMB EMB EV also uh, puts those together and there's a bunch you can find on eBay they call them duct tape batteries um, you know it really just comes down to what cells they use so I'm not going to get into that. That's plenty of research you can do. I went with life or with lipo, which is just lithium polymer. And the reason why I did that is because I can uh, upgrade later for much cheaper than I invested initially because I already have the charger and the power supply and all the connectors and everything else, and I can just add batteries if I want to. So if I need more more uh, amp hours, I can do that. Um, even if I choose to upgrade, a lot of people apparently have upgraded their controller to a 40 amp uh, 40 amp uh, 72 volt controller and apparently you can actually do that with this motor um, but I think for now I'm just gonna see what I what I get with this and apparently I'll be I'll be fine so a 20 amp hour battery uh, with a lithium polymer um, you know should get me on my commutes you know the distance from my commutes really easily uh, one property, I'm an AV guy by trade, so uh, one of my properties that I manage is uh, about five miles away, and you know, so it's a 10, 10 mile round trip. Um, my office is actually located about 14 and a half miles away, and ideally, I wanted to use this to build a commute if I could. If I don't have to be hauling a bunch of gear around, then I'd rather just ride my bike. So the SLA setup right now um, realistically gets me about uh, six miles of range and it takes about an hour for them to charge back up to full. Now I know, you know, he said to replace these batteries uh, in, uh, let's see, so it would have been July of last year. Again, this is March 1st. So they have some, you know, they have some wear on them. Um, realistically I can charge these they they settle at about 3.35 um, uh, sorry no 12 point each each battery because the way you wired them up you can actually measure um, you can measure and charge each 12 volt battery uh, independently using a 12 volt charger or you can charge the entire pack up together with a 48 volt charger that I have right there so, which I have been kind of playing with a little bit, you know, like just topping off the batteries and seeing where they settle. But I can actually let's see if I can just do that really quick right now. We'll see where these guys are. These, you know, they've been, they've been sitting and charging. So I'm thinking it's going to be, my guess is, you know, 13.3. Uh, Okay, so it's 13.6, 13 which is actually good. If, you're, if you know about SLAs, then you're probably going, wow, it's pretty good. Okay, that's where the rest of them are at, 13.4. So <clears throat> they do have some life left in them. Like I said, six hours is what you get. Um, I was kind of disappointed in the guy. Uh, that I bought this from because I have been doing my research. I knew what to expect. For kicks, I asked him, you know, what kind of range he was getting out of SLAs, and he said 25 to 30 miles, and that that was kind of disheartening. I'd already, you know, more or less decided I was going to buy the bike, but, you know, he didn't have to lie. You know, I mean, it's if he would have told me exactly the miles, I mean, that's the why. That's why I asked. It wasn't because I was hoping for 25 or 30 miles. I mean, that's ridiculous. I don't think there's really any 10 amp hour battery out there or any ba battery chemistry for that matter that you would get a, you know, 25 to 30 miles uh, average range. Um, you know, 
maybe on flat ground with a tailwind all day long, you know, maybe, but whatever. So my the reason why I mentioned that is if you're going to be selling and buying bikes, you know, just be honest about what you have and what you're offering and what the range is. So many companies do that too. And it just drives me crazy. Just be honest. You know, people want to know because they want to know, not because, you know, they're hoping for the world. So, um, yeah. And then, you know, I have the, I have these on there, the little, I had duct tape because it's, you know, I'll get a smaller size, yada, yada. Um, but I do have the fenders, so that definitely helps for commuting. Um, in future videos, I'll be um, strapping my camcorder to the uh, handlebars, and so you'll be able to see, you know, some of the rides I take. Um, the camcorder I've got has really good um, uh, time lapse uh, capability, so I'll be taking, and it has really good uh, optical image stabilization, so. Um, I should be able to get some really good shots of my, my commutes and stuff, and so you can see that. Um, I'll probably do a video too, just of the SLA setup. Um, you know, the, a ride, you know, because I can go down to my one property uh, using the SLAs just fine. So what I've been doing for the last couple weeks is, you know, riding down to uh, my one property that's downtown. I live in Portland, Oregon, by the way. So um, it's very hilly. And there's a lot of elevation change. Um, you know, roughly I'm going about 200, or I, you know, my, the elevation change is about 200 feet e each way. So uh, it's about 200 feet down, uh, going down, and then about 200 feet up, going back up. But there's a crest of the hill, um, kind of about three quarters of the way coming back up. So a quarter of the way down, I have to uh, be kind of trudging up a hill, or I would if I wasn't, you know, riding an e-bike. So. Yeah, um, it does have front suspension and rear suspension as well. Um, this is a really good bike from what I can tell for this setup. Um, the bike itself is about 45 pounds before you add the kit. The kit is somewhere around 20 pounds. Um, and then depending on what you go for for batteries. So the SLAs are super heavy, like I said, weighs about 100 pounds. Um, I'm hoping to get my bike down to about 75 to 80 pounds. Um, and the reason why it's still going to be a little heavy is because I'm going to probably put a uh, 50 caliber ammo container inside of this pack because I was trying to figure out the best way of being able to take my batteries out and charge them, you know, during, you know, at work or whatever else, but I wanted to keep them fire safe and everything else. Um, so I, I think the ammo, ammo can, can is going to be my best route. Um, and that weighs about five pounds by itself. So it adds the extra five pounds back, but still 80, you know, 75, 80 is better than a hundred plus, which is where it's at now. And it's still fine to ride, honestly. Like I, I really wouldn't care if I, if I had, if it, if it was exactly the way it was and I could get uh, 20 miles range, um, realistically, I would just leave it honestly. But I am looking forward to the LiPo setup. So more videos to come. And I'm also going to go over some accessories that I've um, purchased, which one of them is on the bike, but I'll just do a full video for everything. Um, just to make life a little bit easier, um, some of the tricks that I've found to, um, you know, just you know, using technology to our advantage. So the last thing I'll address before I close the video is people are probably going to be wondering, what's it like to have 26 inch rims on a 29er bike? Well, with this particular model, I have no issue whatsoever. However, the two things that will always be brought up is um, that people are worried about is usually the uh, pedal, the pedal distance to the ground, right? And this is actually this is actually quite far from the ground, right? Um, I can turn you know on a dime and I won't clip these. I can turn very sharply and I have never touched these and neither has the other guy. I mean, I, I've, I've even checked the pedals to see if they're scraped and they're not. So that's good. Um, the other thing though is that it does technically change the rake. So with the wheel being bigger, um, the, the rake would be, or the angle of attack would be a little bit uh, steeper. So that does make the front end a little bit squirrely. So, you know, meaning you, you probably wouldn't be riding with your hands off the handlebars, but to me that doesn't make any, make any difference because it's an e-bike and I'll be using the throttle. So I'll have my hands on my bike. 
I really don't care. And it doesn't make it like squirrely in terms of, you know, feeling unsafe by any means. As I'm going fast, I feel safe. It's just, it won't, it won't be um, exactly as stable as you would expect, maybe. Um, but in a way, I also like it because uh, it puts my riding position a little bit farther forward. Uh, when I'm standing up, like I actually help my bike up hills, you know, like a really steep hill, I'll just stand up on my bike and uh, still use the throttle about halfway and uh, just help it up. has no issue whatsoever on uh, regular, like shallow grades. It's, you know, it's really easy to um, pedal. I mean, I, I hardly have to use any work at all. So yeah, it's really, it's a really good setup. Um, I think it's perfect, honestly. I couldn't have asked for anything better. And I look forward to upgrading it as I go along. But first things first is the batteries. So that's what we'll cover on the next video. Cheers.